good evening. Uh, we'll start tonight with um, public comment on any items that are not on the agenda. Anyone here for general public comment? All right, let's roll right into the seven o'clock uh, hearing uh, site plan amendment uh, for six, 70, excuse me, 79 King Street, Northampton, map ID 31B-216. Hi, I'm Rick Klein, partner with the Berkshire Design Group here on uh, behalf of a number of applicants that are here, including Mr. Goggins to my right. Um, when this project originally came before you, it was done in entirety with the front building and the back building. Um, circumstances have lent themselves to the point where we're ready to build the back building, but the front building is not quite ready yet. So we're asking for a phasing and site plan amendment uh, on the plan that you have in front of you. Um, the back building that that you can see on the drawing stands entirely on its own. <coughs> Parking is on its own. Nothing changes. The stormwater management is in place for the back building on its own and should easily stand as a single phase. And so we're asking for an amendment to the site plan. Okay. Questions from the board? Randy, you look quizzical. No, I'm looking quizzical at the presentation. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's not you. Yeah. I had been unclear that stormwater management was already done for, but that was my only question. So, um, but that answered it. Okay. So, what happened to change the order? Uh, the bank. <laughs> the bank. You don't have to answer that. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> the bank. Uh, the, the plan had been when it was proposed here last winter uh, to have uh, the Bank of uh, America that was a tenant in the building in, in the, the front of the lot. Um, build a new building in the uh, closer to the street as we discussed here when I was here at that time uh, they did not renew their lease they've had a change of plans <laughs> so that has uh, changed the pace of of what's going to happen there the back building is is uh, a uh, four-story building that's going to be built known by DA Sullivan and uh, they're going to be my offices will eventually be on the first floor and it'll be three floors of apartments above there. Oh, okay. and uh, on the front <laughs> Okay, at this point, uh, that was uh, a bit of a surprise, as you might imagine, to me. But uh, we're going to be dealing with that uh, as we go forward. So the building that you we talked about coming down in the front of the lot uh, will not be coming down immediately. The lot they're going to be moving out of there on the uh, 22nd of November, and the lot will be used as entirely for staging in relation to the construction of the new building by DA Sullivan. But do you think that building will come down? That's the plan. The plan really hasn't changed. It's been a little interrupted. Some time, but we'll see what happens. Okay, thank you. Well, no, uh, Pat, okay. But do you see that front now changing in any other use? Other That's not my intention. I, my, I, I would expect that that will still be used. I certainly hope that it will still be used as was planned. And uh, yeah. it was a surprise to me, obviously, but uh, it's still a good site, and I think that will eventually someone will recognize that. Thank you. Um, other questions from the board? Okay, we will uh, take public comment and comment on this uh, project. Okay. I move to close the public hearing. Thank I, you. I do have DPW comments then. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I defer my motion. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and mostly, I, I mean, I think what the biggest issue before you is, is how it was presented is it's just really reorienting the phasing. There's some things that DPW had concerns about because there's some slight technical modifications on the plan. So I think um, in, um, so DPW wants to make sure that all the previous comments made for the conditions remain in place and that um, in addition to that, that they, um, get um, actually construction or bid documents prior to um, this phase, two weeks prior to this phase going forward because there's some um, technical details that they want to have finalized um, and have pipes line up and um, have drain lines running in the right direction and things like that. So, um, and then they had some more specific um, drain configuration conditions that they wanted to see um, put in place. So I just um, wanted to make sure that you all are aware of that. I could read the, the memo or, um, you know, I would suggest you maybe attach conditions uh, are those, related to that. Are those a change from the original? There's some differences from the original plan 
shown on this plan and it could just be errors or it could actually be adjustments that they would just want to make sure everything lines up <coughs> all right. so you can ask the applicant if they want to clarify any of those um, at all but I just wanted to sure there is a minor change in this where in the existing parking lot there's a catch basin in the back and we have stormwater treatment chamber and we're sending it to that existing catch basin now which won't be there in the future and so that's the the only change in it and rather than to get the whole parking lot we can actually tie in earlier but we still have all the same stormwater management that we need that's been approved previously. And you've seen the memo from DPW? Yes, and we have no issues with it. You have no issues with it, great. Um, so I still want to ask a clarifying question about the, sure. the stormwater permit. They are two different, they are done by the two different phases or is there a single for the whole property? Well, there's not a separate stormwater permit because it's under an acre. So, but it's a major project. So DPW has to review to s make sure there's compliance with stormwater, but it's not a separate permitting process. Okay. So um, the stormwater, so it will be, the whole thing is approved to function as one, but they also want to make sure it functions in pieces. So part of the comments relate to that. They want to make sure the as-built's from phase one, will match up when they start doing phase two so they want to see the as built before the phase two happens so that you know all the pieces of the big puzzle fit together in the end so they have jurisdiction to review it from an engineering standpoint to make sure you know there's no overflow on king street or to the bike path or anything like that um, so that will happen but it's not a separate permit to clarify what carolyn is saying is they want to see it before we start the next phase to make sure that Everything we said we were going to do in the first phase is actually the same elevation we said it was going to be and so on. It's just going to sound naive for me. I'm not really questioning it. I just don't quite understand the process. But if you, uh, now that we've increased the height that you could build a building, you know, if the zoning, if, if more of a building were built in the front than you had intended and we had more water, you know, well, it's just storm water. Never mind. Well, the other thing is that even if you go from one story to two story or even three story the in the same footprint, footprint, right. footprint. it won't increase. Right. I talked myself right out yeah. of that. <laughs> so, so there really isn't an issue about using the existing storm grain. Right. No, if you were to build an entirely different building with a different footprint, then you'd have to take right, and then you'd have to review it anyway if it's a different um, footprint in central. The other thing is the design hasn't been entirely approved for the front building. This this building that's in, that has now been switched in is phase one, just got approval on Tuesday from Central Business Architecture Committee. And that same committee will have to review the phase one building when they're ready and they know what the heights are and everything else. Is the DPW happy? Is that, I guess that's my bottom line question. <laughs> um, they'll be happy as soon as they get revised plans that make some corrections to some errors and then line everything up. They'll be does fine. Does that mean we can't approve this? No, it does not mean you can't approve it. Have it they, means that you can approve it conditionally with the conditions that DPW asked that they get um, pre-bid documents um, for phase one and then prior to phase two they get um, an as-built from phase one and that they make <coughs> all the corrections in the drain configurations that they've noted and the applicant has seen comments on. Okay. Any more comments from the public? Is, That's my line. Um, no, there, the, no one from the public. To speak. Okay, then I move that we close the public hearing. Mm -hmm. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Uh, discussion amongst the board? I will entertain a motion. I move you approve site plan uh, amendment at Goggins for 79 King Street, Northampton, map ID 31B216. Second. All in favor? With, I'm sorry, with, with uh, contingencies as identified by the DPW. Still second. Still second. All in favor? <laughs> Still in favor. Oh, but I don't know about We have three minutes and two sets of, three minutes and two sets of minutes. Um, is that good? Yeah. Do the minutes, uh -huh. um, minutes for August 22nd. Anyone like to make a motion to approve those? So moved. Second. All in favor? 
Moving on, minutes for. Oh, I printed those twice. I thought there were two sets. I only got one. No, there were two. Were there? I'm sorry, I have two sets for August. One was August, one was. I got more than one, they came. Maybe you approved the July minutes, if so, then you're all set. Right. No. Did anyone else get minutes from July? I thought, yeah, I thought so. I thought there were two sets. Oh, all oh, right. We're all set. <laughs> one set of minutes. Oh, okay. And one minute to kill. Anything you want to talk about? Um, not that it would take one minute. <laughs> if you talked really fast. No. Still not. <laughs> anyone? Oh yeah, we did. Could I request that the uh, that monitor be turned on? What is that monitor? I'll show you who's actually got out. Oh. I know whether I can pick one or not. <laughs> Be tempted. Yeah, Do you want to? You want to just sit, and I'll finish. It. Yeah, that's fine. That's so well. Mm -hmm. Hi there. Oh, okay. Ready? I'd like to open a public hearing scheduled for 7:15. Site plan uh, for 28 multifamily units at Village Hill Road, Northampton. Map ID 31C-18. Hi again. I'm Rich Lyons. <laughs> It's like deja vu all over. I'm here tonight on behalf of Wright Builders, and we have a presentation to make that will be on the screen. And I'm starting with a, an existing condition survey. Um, that's a little hard to see, um, but the reason that it's up there is in the lower middle, where it says Village Hill Road, going up. There's a building just to the right of where it says Village Hill Road. Right now they have a parking lot that you can see at the bottom right-hand side of the site. There's that a ha red pointer too if you need it. You just push the, in the middle button. Oh, there's one. Right there. There's 11 spaces there that as part of this get relocated. And I just wanted to point these out to you where they are. Um, they just get relocated as part of the whole project so that you know that it's happening. So this is the project in entirety. And to try to, to start to explain the whole process, I'm going to introduce John on the right, President of Wright Building. Thank you, Rick. You want, I don't know, what is this a pointer? Yeah, well, it's a pointer and a clicker to go to the next slide when you're ready. Just the pointer. I need pointers. The middle. <laughs> this one? Yeah. There you go. It should be a red um, laser, too. If you... oh, that's even better. There you go. That's better. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Well, we just stumbled into the 21st century. Um, thank you for having us tonight. Mark Redwell, my business partner, and I are here tonight. This is our fifth project on the North Campus at Village Hill. Um, we're delighted to be here. It's been a, a somewhat arduous and uh, um, detailed process to get here tonight. I think we're two and a half years of planning uh, in and out of this particular project. What this project does, the Upper Ridge, is uh, infill the rest of the undeveloped land inside the core campus of, of, uh, of the North Campus of Village Hill. So it is entirely surrounded by finished infrastructure. <clears throat> it essentially has to be airlifted in in phases. So it's a, uh, uh, a sequencing and uh, lay down challenge. Um, but what it does is, I think, uh, quite handsomely and um, 
profoundly fulfill the vision of the upper campus at Village Hill. Until now, basically, one side of each road has been developed, kind of pending the park and pending this piece and pending future development. So in our first phase, which is right there, this is a four-unit townhouse in which we obviate all that parking that's there now, compact it against the building, reduce the total amount of asphalt, and add four units, which face the park, just as our Beechwood houses face the park, but also have access from the common way. We've arranged for this common way to move uh, through the project so that we have uh, uh, emergency access that's uh, compatible with the safety requirements. Very quickly, the second phase, we move across the street. We have a, a duplex townhouse here, which is a new form here on Musanti Drive. Again, this was a piece of, of the property below the coach house that the agency mass development wasn't aware of the development potential of, so we were able to bring that forward. And then on either side of Village Hill Road are buildings that we call the flats. These are uh, three-story, uh, six-unit elevator equipped, fully accessible uh, ownership apartments. And then finally, in the fourth phase, or the rest of the third phase, we have more on the park front. And then finally, in the fourth phase, townhomes facing Ford Crossing. <coughs> It is, as I said, four phases. It's ambitious, but it is flexible. It allows us to respond to market conditions. Uh, what you're seeing is 28 units. There are uh, possibilities for us to slightly increase or slightly de decrease those. Obviously, we'd have to come back to the board to discuss those if that did happen. We've had a community meeting uh, with the neighbors there and uh, explained the project in detail. Took some comments on that. Uh, the substance of them are two. One, you'll see on the plan tonight uh, that where Beechwood Way, which is private, and the back of this parking come together, the residents at Beechwood wanted something more than simply curb ends there. So we're, we're showing uh, boulders there to make it very clear that even the most uh, ambitious uh, driver can't get through there. Um, and then the folks in this house have asked for some uh, supplementary landscaping uh, kind of finishing out this corner, which we're going to work with them on in situ. So we really like that process as well. Uh, we've been working closely with TCB. They're the property owners here. Um, they lose their parking for a period of time. They have their inconvenienced in other ways. We've actually uh, uh, begun arranging with the city for this section of Village Hill Road to be uh, uh, plowed by TCB this winter in exchange for not ticketing. So this will become their, their exchange overnight parking. So that's kind of a nice idea that the people that run the maintenance for the apartments figured out as well. If we plow it and, and, and DPW doesn't have to deal with it for the winter, can we just move our cars around? Because they have to figure out some way to you know, have swing space to, to, to remove snow. Um, all the easy places to put cars and snow are being are, are used. So that's the kind of thing we've been working out in great detail with the various easements and so on. We've also had a lot of cooperation uh, from, the, from uh, the planning department and especially from DPW. The <coughs> stormwater challenges here and the record keeping and bookkeeping of how much impervious area is uh, spoken for is, is uh, sometimes uh, mysterious. And uh, I, think, I think we've cracked that nut. So we're, we're pleased with that. So um, the, the architects from Kuhn Riddle are here. They'll also explain how it is that we've imagined having this um, these two buildings of essentially Greek Revival cottages with connectors and barns that form the <coughs> four building complexes here, uh, finishing out that fourth style that's allowed on the North Campus. Um, the Victorian, the Craftsman, the uh, uh, Farmhouse or, or uh, Colonial, and the, and the Greek Revival. So really, what you will see in the end here is essentially two and three, one, two, and three-story buildings in all four styles that represent the, the, pan, you know, the panorama or the palette of historic designs that were brought forward as part of this project. So we're really excited about seeing that, that uh, brought to fruition. So back to you. Well, there's two more exciting slides if you want to click forward to yeah. the next slide. Is that this way? Yep. OK. So these are, uh, this is a view from the park. Um, looking at phase, our phase, the end of our phase one townhouse group. And then this is our phase three townhouse group here. And in the back, you can see one of our flats buildings, our three-story flats buildings. 
This is the park, which is complete, uh, and the walkway, which is complete. When we met with you in August, <coughs> there were, July or August, there were some open items about signs to the park. Those have been resolved. The easements are all in place. Uh, but I think there, Carolyn, are there any open items from that agenda? We got the recorded easements <coughs> just last week or something, right. so those are all done for the, for the access. Um, a condition that we, we haven't asked for, but you may stumble across, we may as well ask for it before you figure it out, is that we have some continuations of those paths through our project, and we do expect to provide public crossing easements on those. We can't do it yet because we don't own them, and their exact location, A, has to be approved by you, and B, has to be surveyed in the field, but they are shown on the site plan, and they are intended and lit as public paths, so you'll see those coming along. <coughs> and you're going to want us to make those public, and, and we want to do that. Looking from Village Hill Road back to the southeast, you see that, again, the Flats building with the common entry, just one unit on each side of each floor. Uh, really, really, really nice looking buildings that Kuhn Riddle had put together with us. We have a common uh, post office area, and now we're looking through to the back side of the second half of the, of the um, uh, Greek Revival Flats, uh, Greek Revival uh, uh, Townhome, excuse me, and off mm -hmm. to the Hol Holyoke Range. So this, uh, this Greek revival idea is kind of, kind of nutty um, that you would, because of course the, the Greeks didn't do townhomes, um, <laughs> not even when they were re being revived did they do townhomes. But actually as you, as you um, look around New England, you will see this, that lovely diminutive Greek revival cottage mm -hmm. with its connector and its barn. So that's what we've brought forth here. And so in this case, that's a three bedroom unit, a two bedroom unit, a two bedroom unit, and a four bedroom unit but they're molded into that architecture. Is it you now? Sure. Okay. There. All right. Thank you very much. We'll be back. <clears throat> um, with that, we're, I'm going to get into some of the nitty gritties of the, the site design and site plan itself. Um, starting at the bottom of the page to the right of Village Hill Road, which is the entrance to the development itself right through here, one thing you'll notice is that the entrance has actually moved from this location of the existing parking lot that came in like that over to here. And what we're doing is employing the alley concept. The 11 spaces that were displaced in the, in the existing conditions plan are all right here. So actually the people that live in this building get to park closer to the building than they do now, which is actually helpful to them. Um, but also then as you drive in, this is a two-car garage, four <coughs> parking spaces for these units and a two-car garage. You come up the alley. Another set of townhouses, two-car garage, two-car garage with four spaces in between. These are garages for the flats units as well, and they've got additional parking up over here. And then we repeat the concept up here with the townhouses, two-car garages or three-car garages in this case, and then parking in between. And then across the street, it's a little different. This flats building here has parking underneath on the lowest floor. Um, and additionally, there's a, a garage unit here, which actually goes with this duplex as well. Um, so the other thing I should tell you is that by changing the configuration here, there's a net loss of two parking spaces on the street here, but we more than make up for it because we've exceeded the parking space requirements uh, per unit in the interior of the whole complex. Um, so um, let's see. So in terms of layout, the other thing that for emergency services, you can come up through here and back out through here. Um, yeah, we talked about parking already. The um, public way through the park and through the whole development actually comes up through here. You can see it wind around through here. It comes on all the way up through here and comes through the existing development. And we've also taken another one through here that comes across and connects as well. So we've provided public access through this and then continues across the street and goes in between the coach house and our development through here, trying to provide public parking and walking um, all the way through the, the um, development. So then in terms of creating and drainage and utilities, this is a little bit hard to see, but in simplistic form, as this is surrounded by streets that are already in place, we needed to meet all of the existing inverts and, and stubs that were already in place, which we've done. Um, store, also employs stormwater management, but it's a little different in this case. Um, the terminology is such that we should employ stormwater management to the extent feasible. And so Mark Darnold will talk about that in a, in a uh, 
brief manner as to how that's accomplished, and we might as well do it now. Yeah, uh, that's a leap. It's a leap point there. Again, the uh, stormwater management on this project is different from what you normally see. Normally, we have to match pre and post um, runoff and treat the water. The whole Village Hill project was previously approved, stormwater project for the entire project. And so for stormwater, there's really two things or three things that we look at. One is peak runoff and water quality and then infiltration. The peak rates of runoff were addressed in the original stormwater, original detention basins that were designed, as well as water quality. So this project does not have to comply with pre and post runoff that's already been addressed. One of the things that needs to be addressed in here is because the detention basins, this site flows in different basins, had a, a design capacity when this concept plan was designed and the, the basins were originally designed. And so DPW, rightfully so, has asked each time the, a new phase of development come along that analysis be performed to make sure that the basins have not exceeded their original design capacity. Um, the applicant in that original stormwater application was mass development, and they are in the process of updating their calculations regarding the detention bases to make sure that they are still having capacity to address this particular project. So that's part of the project is the, typically we get really involved with the managing the peak flows and this one here will really only have to address the amount of impervious area so that mass development can assure DPW and the city that the drainage as originally designed is still functioning that way. The second clause of this particular project is Village Hill there's a requirement that stormwater be infiltrated to the max to the uh, uh, maximum extent feasible, I believe is the terminology. And so what we have done in this particular project, wherever we have collected roof water from the buildings, for example, well, I'm gonna hit the wrong button here. These black lines coming down represent roof leader and those are collected in a long connecting pipe. Wherever we get the roof water into a situation where we can put that water into a pipe, it's perforated pipe and stone, that would allow the roof water in this particular situation to infiltrate along this way area. What doesn't infiltrate continues to go out into the stormwater uh, drainage system. So we've collected the roof here. This roof system here, we have another infiltration system down here, and we have another infiltration system in this location to catch those. This roof is infiltrated. All the roofs are infiltrated on the uh, project. What we do not infiltrate is the pavement. Pavement is essentially dirty water. We need to be treated first. We don't really want to encourage <coughs> dirty water to go into an infiltration system. So we have taken all the drainage from the roofs and where it gets far enough away from the buildings that we don't send the water into the basement, we've incorporated perforated pipe and stone to allow that to infiltrate. There were um, borings and testers <coughs> done on this project primarily as a function of design of the buildings, make sure they adequate, adequately designed. There were um, 17 borings and 19 test pits conducted throughout the project site. Um, they consisted mostly of fill, artificial fill, or brown sand, loose to compact sand throughout the entire project. So we feel that the project as it is, is highly conducive to stormwater. And we've taken, again, I think the important part is wherever we had an opportunity to infiltrate the water, we have infiltrated the water, provide an opportunity to infiltrate the water. There is no performance standard. Typically, as an engineer, I have to meet a certain number of pre and post or certain amount of uh, attenuation. This says to the extent feasible, so we do feel that we made every effort to infiltrate uh, what was feasible, the roof water. And we chose a location that was adjacent to the buildings that we could do it before the stormwater picked up pavement water. So. We do feel we've uh, pushed it that way to do, again, stormwater to the maximum extent feasible for infiltration. And again, the infiltration, I want you to differentiate between the detention basins, which are not relying upon infiltration. That was originally designed assuming no infiltration. So any infiltration we have here is, an, is a benefit to the uh, detention basins, and it's just good environmentally, too, to recharge it. That's a, a quick summary of the somewhere yes does the DPW agree with your assessment that you've the extent possible in the yeah they again it's uh we've had a lot of verbal comments back and forth between us and Doug McDonald and uh, right now he's interested in uh, verifying that the locations that we have chosen again we had random test pits throughout the project 
which again were primarily for buildings, but the test pits were close to where these uh, infiltration trenches are. And verbally, he said he'd really like to see those locations verified that we are at de adequate separation from groundwater. The test pits indicated that they found groundwater around 10 to 16 feet deep. We don't have test pits at the exact locations, and he verbally requested that, uh, and maybe uh, Britt wants to, that those exact locations be verified regarding separation of groundwater. So, but does that mean right now, tonight, DPW has informally signed off on the stormwater? Well, they have, um, so uh, DPW yesterday got um, a geotechnical report uh, that was, uh, they were able to go quickly. It didn't have a um, summary of groundwater. There are a bunch of other issues um, on the plans that they um, have uh, actually, they had a four-page memo about all the things that needed to be corrected. So I guess my recommendation to the board would be, I think you could take all the information, take public comment, and potentially close the hearing, but not issue a permit till two weeks from now. And then in the interim, all those uh, plans could get revised with corrections that are necessary so that it limits the number of conditions on the permit. Instead of having 25 conditions, you could bring it down to five or ten. And so that would be my recommendation, because a lot of them have to deal with, you know, correct the plans in this way, let's do that. So. You're aware of the memo from DPW? Yeah, I am. Again, just to, to jump in a little bit, a lot of the comments on there were uh, suggestions, well, requirements they wanted for construction documents. Again, these are permanent documents. Uh, they asked, you know, and detail be shown for handicap ramps. That's, that's an obvious thing. Um, they wanted um, clean outs shown at where the sewer stubs across the property line. They wanted the detail of that. That's an easy thing to do. Um, again, these are details are added to construction drawings, which obviously need to be done prior to construction. We're fully aware of that. But from a site plan layout perspective, the way that things work, we feel that we've got it adequately shown. Were there any comments from the DPW that you took exception to or no? No. No. We no. actually feel that we can answer all the comments within a couple of days, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. So we would actually ask that you approve it tonight. And we'd have to answer all those comments with them prior to a building permit anyway. And we don't take exception to anything they said, and we're happy to comply with everything they want. I think the memo specifically says prior to construction, they wanted to, prior to bid, they would request a set of construction documents that were stuck in the stamp. And we have actually no problem with that. Yeah, one of the issues is, um, and uh, we, we got one of the questions that um, needed to be answered was um, from mass development side, as was described previously about the capacity in each of the basins. We got um, late this afternoon information from the mass development engineer about one of the basins, and he noted that the next basin was forthcoming. So DPW just hasn't had time to review it. And I think from our perspective, it's just a matter of not wanting to put all these conditions in the lap of um, the building commissioner to say, okay, have you done one through 25 before I can issue you a building permit? Right. It's, and so, um, because this is such a big project and there's so many technical details, um, we feel like it makes sense to just get those revised plans. Not that you, you can close the public hearing, you don't even actually need to, it, it, basically you'd be looking at a clean plan set that has all of those items and then you could draft a um, permit, an actual permit. In a couple of weeks, if, weeks. Yeah. If, I, if I could just comment on that, um, with great respect, we quite firmly disagree. Um, this project has been in planning, in detailed planning and conversation with the DPW for eight months. And uh, the data regarding basin number three um, and its 22,000 square feet of reserve capacity after this has been in the DPW's hands for six months. The only alteration that they received late this afternoon was to change the calculation from 22,000 square feet of reserve capacity for which there is no use to 20,000 square feet of capacity for which there is no remaining use. The second detention basin, uh, in any case, this is a performance requirement from mass development to the city of Northampton. And as you remember, on Beechwood, we were placed in this position of enforcing the city's relationship with mass development and we don't wish to be placed there. We have a good relationship with mass development. The city meets with mass development and their engineers every month. If they need information, they can have it whenever they want it and we don't like to be in that position. I don't want to be difficult, but it, 
<coughs> frankly, the second basin where the calculations show a great deal of reserve. There has been, since we began our, our discussions, the introduction of the Christopher Heights project, there is reserve capacity for that. Those calculations are being done. We're not impacting that basin until uh, a building permit next year, so we don't want this project held up for that. The two, the, the, everything about what Carolyn has proposed makes perfect sense, except for the fact that it means the decision is delayed for two weeks. Two weeks puts us into the end of the first week of November to construction start. We have $118,000 worth of uh, immediate site work that has to be done. We have road cuts to do. We're working on a 4.9 percent slope that goes, you know, we have a lot of work to do. So we would really like to start our work here. Uh, we have money that's costing us 7.5 percent per year that's waiting to be used. So from our perspective, uh, it is not construction ready, but it's permit ready. And uh, we'd like to have, have you review the permit and the conditions and issue the conditions, including the ones I've asked you for earlier this evening. Um, and that's, I think, an appropriate direction. We certainly will follow whatever your wishes are and do it very gracefully. But <coughs> we, do, we do think that we're uh, in better shape and have provided the necessary information for permitting, not for construction. And that's a, a situation that you find with every project. Not every construction detail is in place at permit times. Um, more simply put, I think, is that in the past you've always, not always, but very often um, permitted projects subject to DPW pro approval and us working things out with DPW prior to the building permit and prior to construction. And we're quite happy to do that again on this project. And uh, I guess that's what we would ask for is approval uh, contingent upon DPW's satisfa satisfaction with their comments. We have no issues with any of their comments. My question is, do you have a stormwater permit or not? We actually don't need a stormwater permit on this. Okay. So that's not the issue here. Um, the issue is just um, the comments from DPW and um, satisfying their interest in the project. Do you want to comment on that? Yeah. I mean, they don't need their own separate stormwater permit, as just described before. It was granted for the project, but each project has to show that um, as it eats away at the capacity that it's still meeting the standard. So it's not a separate permit, but because of the way this project is operating or, or being um, phased in and built out, um, all of that data has to go into the hopper essentially <coughs> each time a project comes. And then DPW makes a determination that yes, it's meeting, yes, no, it's not. But the short answer is we could condition this. You don't need to hold it up to wait for a stormwater permit. You could condition it, it yes. Which brings me to my question. So you're saying the list of conditions would be long, and you're saying you think that most of those would get worked out and wouldn't end up as conditions. Yes, it's actually not unusual for us to receive a long list from DPW, as you might know. And it, w w there are no conditions we take any exception to. And uh, also, we feel that many of these conditions can be worked out within a matter of days. Um, the, the capacity issue that um, Carolyn was uh, talking about is actually we don't see that as an issue because there's way more excess capacity available. Out of the 22,000, we're only using a couple thousand, so it goes down by 2,000, there's 20,000 left. It's the same on the other basin. So these are great magnitude issues that we're a drop in the bucket. So we're not worried about that part, and neither is DPW. But rightfully so, the city would like documentation, which we're happy to help get from mass development. But at the same time, we don't want to be held up for it. And so as we build each one of these and we're using that, the capacity in the, in the basins, it, this is the last? I mean, it was described as the build-out. Is how, how much more? No, there's actually more room. I foresee this being, being the, the last guy in line doesn't have any water no. capacity. No, there's, there's more coming and there's much more capacity available. At some point, it will get down to a point where, gee, there's only X amount left. Be careful. But we're not at that point yet. Did you finish your presentation or when? Did I know? Okay. Do you want to go uh, ahead and do that? Because uh, I feel like we got caught up on this. Sure. We can revisit it, but let's I, finish um, the presentation. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Were any of the DPW comments specific to, in general, any one of the phases, like centered around, you know, a larger percentage of the comments were on phase four, which isn't going to happen until down the line anyway, or no? Or were they all general comments? Mostly? Um. <laughs> Primarily general comments, and certainly not any comments that were specific to phase one or even two, as I recall. That's what I'm getting at, yeah. So let me do a little bit more. 
Um, so anyway, that's the utility plan. Uh, then there's a planting plan, and the plant lists are far too small to read, even on the sheets that you have in front of you. But suffice it to say that the landscape up there that we've done so far with Wright Builders looks great. Everybody loves it, and this is more of the same. Um, I'm happy to talk about specific plants if you'd like. But in general, we're trying to keep the same flavor of Village Hill going. Um, uh, we already talked about this. This is utilities again. Uh, detailing, um, there's a couple of different kinds of fences. There's a six foot shadow box fence, which is this, that goes in between patios, similar to the ones we've used already on the site. Um, then there is a four foot fence that's right here. That's a lattice fence that goes around utilities, boxes, and things like that. Um, this, the fence that you see up there is a dumpster enclosure. Um, that's the sample of the lighting. Again, trying to keep the high quality of development that we've already started up at Village Hill uh, going. So many of these details are similar to things that you've seen up there already. And then this is the lighting plan, photometrics. Um, again, it complies with everything in Northampton, uh, the bylaw. Um, it actually provides quite, it's a low level of light, but it suffices to be safe. And with that, we're going to start a little bit of a discussion about the architecture, just so you can see it um, and, and enjoy it. And with that, I'll introduce Charles Roberts from Keen Riddle. So do I switch the um, Left, right here, and the red one is the... So that goes backwards, forwards, forwards, backwards. Okay. So, hi, I'm Charles Roberts, Keen Riddle Architects. I'm happy to be here to talk about some of the architectural details of these buildings up here. As Jonathan mentioned earlier, the, all the design that's happening up here at Village Hill is based on uh, design guidelines set up by CD, CBT Architects in Boston at the behest of mass development. Um, our designs have gone through a pretty rigorous review process, two or three step review process with mass development as we've been developing these, um, these the looks and the elevations and massing of these buildings um, as, you know, through, uh, over the course of the last couple of years, really. Um, all the buildings are, you know, are, are based on these uh, familiar uh, regional prototypes, the arts and crafts, the Victorian, the farmhouse, the, uh, the Greek revival. Um, the last project we worked on, which is, uh, that I worked on with, with uh, Wright Builders, which is, I don't see if I get the fate, which is the laser? The red one. The red one. So the Eastview townhouses sort of down here where I'm, where I'm pointing in the black. And uh, the, uh, the phase one and phase three townhouses are based loosely on, on that plan in terms of, in terms of uh, uh, floor plans and general uh, unit layout and design. However, the look of the building has changed uh, significantly from an arts and crafts to this sort of, uh, of a hybrid uh, Greek revival and farmhouse combination. Um, we didn't do this drawing, but we did do these drawings. Um, so this is this is phase one. Um, you can see the uh, the building stepping up the hill. This is this is the. Um, this is not working. Oh, here we go. So this is the uh, the Greek Revival cottage or farmhouse, or, well, the Greek Revival house, I should say. It's along Mosier Drive. This is the idea of this connector piece between the farm between the house and this larger uh, element here, which is the barn. So the, the the general idea here is to create a sense of one larger building rather than a repetitive number of units. Yet each unit has its own sort of distinct sense of, of entry in place as the building moves along the park and steps up the hill. So this this is the elevation that actually faces out towards the park. So it's it's functionally it's the back of the building, but in terms of the way the building presents itself to the public and addresses the park, it's very much the front. It has a sense of gracious uh, opening to the park with porches and, and nice detailing. Um, the detailing on the uh, on the the, uh, the Greek Revival house is a little more. Um, refined. There's more detail in the columns and the window trims. And then as we move along to the connector and the barn, the trims become simpler, a little narrower, a little narrower, a little more um, vernacular in a certain way. Um, this is uh, not my. This hmm, I guess we didn't get phase phase two. Well, maybe maybe it'll come later. So this is the um, this is phase three. 
phase two, which is across the way here. This, the building we're looking at right now is this building, that's, which is going to be the, the flats, what we're calling the flats building with the parking underneath on the downhill side and the front uh, facing out on Village Hill Road. So this is a view of the building from Village Hill Road. You see the, uh, the, the common um, central entry piece here, which goes to a uh, stair and elevator core that serves um, three floors of, uh, of flats, um, two units on each floor. So this building is done, is developed in, along the idea of the arts and crafts uh, language. Um, arts and crafts buildings tend to be, have a certain kind of Asian influence in a way, and they tend to sort of, ha they tend to be kind of low slung, and, and it's, you know, doing a three-story um, arts and crafts building that has that, that, that character to it is challenging. And one of the ways we've addressed it is with these broad roof overhangs, um, some bracketing detailing, which isn't really showing up great here, but it's under, you can see it in the shadow line of these, uh, these uh, eaves. And then also in the articulation of the siding, which, which we're wrapping around the building without corner boards, which reduces the sense of verticality within the building and creates um, a horizontal wrap, which helps bring the, uh, the, the overall profile of the building down and, and, uh, and sort of bring it, you know, help bring it down and to the ground plane. Um, this is the rear elevation. Which is which is uh, taller because it has the uh, the garages underneath. You see the central uh, the central core in the middle between the two uh, the two flanking bays of units. Um, each unit has a, a bracketed steel balcony which is uh, hung off the side of the building that's um, accessed off the dining area of each of these units. Um, each unit has its own um, garage and storage area accessed from down here. There's also this, this, uh, the secondary parking uh, for each unit is, is um, I, are they loaded up directly behind the garages? Yes. Yes. This is Flats West. Right? This, this is Flats West, exactly. Um, flats East would be the mirror image of this um, across the road, but, uh, and wouldn't, but wouldn't have the garages underneath. So it would be, it would be, you, you just take your hand and sort of block out all the garage stuff. That's, that, that's the back of Flats, West, Flats, Flats East. Um, this is a duplex um, that's also part of phase two. This is based on the language we developed for the, the Eastview townhouses, um, adapted and modified to, uh, to become a two-family. Um, uh, this, so there's, this is, whoops. One unit is right, right here, and then the, the second unit is, is here. Um, they're uh, they're both. They're. Um, you can go back to the site plan here quickly. So this is this is the, uh, the duplex right over in here in back of the flats, and uh, the the uh, the units are, are accessed off of. Is this Mosher Street? Is that what you said? Musanti. So, um, so they're they're both act, both units are accessed off Musanti, and then uh, for their public uh, access, and then they come back around in here, and they uh, they swing into this garage, and that's where they have their uh, their uh, their covered parking, and then this is I guess oh, this is also additional overflow parking for guests for the to get the uh, the full one and a half or two two car spaces per unit. So that's that's the uh, image we have for that. All the colors that we that, that we're showing here for all of these buildings are based on uh, uh, a palette that Mass Development has approved. That are all the Benjamin Moore historic colors. They have a very nice, uniform kind of dignified look, no matter what hue or color you're using. They sort of all hang together really nicely, and and, and they help I think tie the the whole aesthetic of the of the development together pretty well. This is phase four. This is still pretty conceptual. We call this our Photoshop paste up. Um, but this is this. What you're seeing here is based on the uh, is based on the um, the. Hmm. I don't know what happened there. I'm probably clicking faster than the machine can think. So, this is uh, th these are based on the arts and crafts. Um, uh, model that we that we set up in uh, in, in Eastview. These are both triplexes 
um, with different with, with with the with the potential to have different uh, varying bedroom counts in each unit depending on what we finally end up with. Um, I guess Jonathan could talk more about some of the possible variations we might be thinking about if you want to. But we we this right now is conceptual, and uh, we'll be moving forward with the, the development of these designs as as the. Uh, as the previous phases are built out and get a sense of, of what's going to be marketable and what people are going to want. Um, to, this, to that end, what we're asking tonight is for site plan approval is to use these units, and if they change, obviously we'll come back. Um, but this is our best guess as to the most popular units. And <coughs> As you might expect, it's difficult to phase. So what this is is a drawing that we actually submitted with Carolyn to talk about how many cars go with each phase to make sure that there's enough parking with each phase and so on, which there is. Uh, but we prepared this uh, as part of the submission so that you could see it. Um, and I think that's the end. But I guess what I'd like to do is I'd also like to go back to the site plan for a second and talk about it. Um, <clears throat> as you might notice from the plan, this is kind of a study in new urbanism to the max. One of the, it's a very tight site, uh, a lot of units on it, it's density, infill, and one of the studies that we're looking at is you can see the garages are back to back. Um, we've studied other new urbanism communities, to how, many, how many feet in between garage doors, and I've seen some that are way too tight and you can't actually make the turn, and we've actually done the research to try to figure out how it can be done, be comfortable, and be, still be successful, and this is um, probably the <coughs> only thing like this we see in Northampton. So with that, what we'd like to do tonight is to ask for an approval, approval in the project uh, contingent upon the satisfaction of the DPW comments and go from there. Thank you. Questions from the board? I'd like to have some handle on how much of the six flat on the left has property that isn't already uh, hard surface. I mean, that looks like 100% hard surface property. <coughs> um, it's not. Actually, there's a couple of things. One is there's landscape in front of it between the sidewalk and there. There's landscape on the sides. But also, this is all landscape through here and through here, down through here and through here. But this is also a common pathway. And there's quite a steep hillside here between it and the coach house, which will it can't be developed because it's too steep. So this is essentially open space that will be usable visually by this lot, even though it's not technically going to be on the property. The property line will end up probably about a foot on the other side of this walkway. But you can't get there from here, so it'll end up as perceivable space. Mm -hmm. And that actually goes to part of the comment that I had about new urbanism. <clears throat> we did study in great detail, um, based on things that we've already built, like Eastview up there, um, how much perceivable space everybody gets, what does it look like when they look out their windows? Are they seeing things that are green enough and nice enough? And we believe that we've satisfactorily done that. Uh, What's the building to the uh, angled off from the sixth flat? Um, this the right here? Uh, that one, yeah. What's this that? is actually parking. That, that's all that's a unit block here. This is a unit block here. This is parking behind. That's all parking, and that's all parking, and that's... Uh, is that correct? And then there's a garage in between the two buildings. Is that right? That's a garage. That's correct. Right. And and is the and the, the, there is an outdoor pl um, area here for grilling, um, and so on. What do you think? I'm because I don't exactly have a handle on. This and actually, by the way, also this is a uh, playground. Okay, I don't exactly have a handle on the slope of the property in terms of <coughs> the back of the six flat there. Yep. Um, Where's, what's the visibility from the street and from other public, from other public places of that big old string of garages? Of this string of garages? Yeah. Very, actually very little. When you come down Musanti, you'll be looking at this and then there's a playground right here. Really all you'll see is the driveway coming in. And so it's- Is that ground going up or is it going down or is it flat? <clears throat> it um, there's a hillside generally coming down this way. way. Uh, this cuts into it at this end. Um, so this is a little bit buried through here. Um, but at the same time, um, and there's also planting through here as well. So, so I actually think this has got very little visibility. Questions? Um, about the phasing, do is the phasing have to be part <coughs> of the permit? 
or do we care what phases they're done in? I mean, it seems to me it doesn't make any difference, and we don't want to run into the same problem we ran in with Goggins' project. Right. I, I would say this is probably a little bit different in that, I mean, the whole village hill is phased, <laughs> essentially. But I think, and that's, it's different from King Street, because on King Street, you know, you, it's, it's the idea is to have buildings at the street. And here, this is sort of a project in process, and to the extent, I mean, if you all don't have a problem which phase goes first, and if they want to alter them, then you can make that clear. But you would be essentially approving the plans as shown with the phasing. You could make comment on there that it's um, if to allow them flexibility to modify the phasing if, you know, market shifts or their development plan shifts. But I don't think, I wouldn't say that it makes a difference in terms of building out Village Hill, which one comes first. We would actually like to have the ability to shift to phasing if possible. If the, the phase one is wildly successful, we might want to just build the next one next. Uh, if there's buyers lined up waiting to get in, is, it makes sense. I, I think they, they made the comment that their intent is to for the build out to follow this, um, architecturally this design, not so much the phasing, but what it's going to look like. So I think. For us, that's what's important, not if they go phase one, two, you know, sequential order. Uh, just <coughs> have a, a note to that. Phase four, uh, what we're presenting to you, Charles was modest about this. They are, the buildings are designed uh, and the sites are sorted out and the lighting and all the things that are necessary for site plan approval. We're simply uh, still wondering whether those will be three, two, threes or three, three, threes and whether at that point we might want to spice up the architecture, make another change there. We understand, and part of our arrangement, our contract with mass development, is we have to start a full process of design review with them for that phase. So that uh, we'll, in all likelihood, back, be back to brief you about that, because I imagine that four years from now, you know, things will be different. That's usually a good assumption that something will change. But for site plan, you know, lot coverage, density, parking, lighting, the use of the, the site. Uh, this is our best guess for now, but we're kind of letting you know that we'd probably come back to tweak it because it's just kind of a long ways away. The reason that the phasing is set up the way that it is, that it allows us in the first phase to, to do a product that's uh, well received and for which we have two likely um, buyers uh, willing and, and uh, at hand and allows us at then next spring with some ramp up time to initiate the, the, the uh, flats and uh, in a configuration that allows us to, to, do, to, to uh, work with inside our equity financing that we have available in terms of the numbers of units that we have under construction and available at any given time. So it's partly a financial piece and it's partly that we, we want to introduce the flats buildings as early as <coughs> we can manage to do so because we think they're desirable and we think they're very uh, start to establish the rest of Village Hill Road. They make the, the downtown street, if you will, like, three-story configuration. Um, I have a, one comment and a few questions. My comment is just that I, the alley parking, I think, is great. Um, uh, the question I had, the first question I had is, I want to go back to the parking for TC, the TCB property while the construction is going on. Um, are all are all will, will there be enough parking on the street and is there any um, consideration I'm guessing that some of those folks may be um, disabled is there a handicapped uh, accessible parking that will um, will be available to them while you're in the build out yes the the handicap access to their um, to this building is along this walkway and this a, a temporary version of this walkway as this is modified will exist throughout the project so that will be maintained mm -hmm. the other thing that actually that they're really excited about is that all winter as a practical manner they'll be able to park on the street which is closer than where they've been parking over here uh, so they're pretty excited about having front yard parking this winter uh, there's no resistance to this idea but it's it's a, it's a sufficient number of spots yes it's okay. a, it's 12 mm -hmm. like replacing 11. great that was my only question. So, it was actually the, the maintenance supervisor up there. We're all trying to figure this out. And she said, well, why don't we just do that? I'm like, oh, right. that's a good idea. Excellent. Um, then I just was curious. You had used a phrase called uh, that you said ownership apartment. I haven't heard that before. I was just wondering if you could explain, explain what that is. Um, it just means that 
the, the configuration of the building is one floor, you know, your unit, and people sometimes call them apartments, and to distinguish them from rental apartments. Okay, so but they'll, they'll, they will be owned, they will be owner Yes, they're, they're condominiums, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But will they be condos, or is that? Yes. I mean, I guess yeah, that's really, right. Okay. right, so yeah. it's another way of saying, okay, okay. <laughs> I wasn't we're missing anything. We're marketing already. Owners. You're right. <laughs> right. What's new which thing to me? Confusing it, which is part of the right. <laughs> marketing. It's not working. Um, and th this is a little off topic, but every time we talk about Hospital Hill, I think about it as the larger project. Um, and I see that somebody's here from Mass Development, and I would really love to hear a little bit what's happening on the commercial end because I'm still waiting for the village in Village Hill. today they you know they continue to show the coach house the male attendance building um lot 20. um there's interest in everything there's just not a buyer on the line and the same with lot 19 which is behind and the lot that the commercial lot that uh right builders has developed are there tenants besides uh fazzy for that for that no, piece the building is owned by opal and opal continues to market there's two retail spaces and one restaurant space and none of them are they, rented out yeah comment as far as we know <laughs> as far as we know <laughs> you're right commercial leasing and patrick can tell you this is can be a very sensitive a competitive world and sure. so um there have been showings and activities and questions and so on we mm -hmm. anticipate that something will be coming this fall but we're not really we're not in control of it but. sure Sure. But it's it seems active. It's active. The board has to keep in mind the entire project as yes. it's so, envisioned so to be. It's, it's active and, and uh, mm -hmm. I can say that our office has done test designs on a number of these parcels for potential buyers of mass development property. And they for commercial? For commercial. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions from the board <coughs> before we open to the public? Uh, let's open up to public uh, comment or questions. Uh, anyone want to speak? Yep, come right up to the mic. Please just state your name and your address. Sure. Um, uh, Barbara Blumenthal, Chapel Street in Northampton. And this is actually the plan I wanted up. I just, I, I should preface this by saying that I think that all the development um, on the whole campus of the, uh, the, uh, the former state hospital, that, that all the developers have been very sensitive to trying to pr protect and preserve older trees and what, what are called specimen trees very often. And I just want a clarification on this plan, which I, I looked online, but it was so little I couldn't be quite sure. Um, on the left, the, the West Flats building, I think where it is now, there are three large I think they're maples, maples. maples. And then on what you're calling the sl that slope between it and the coach house, there are some very large um, evergreens. And I just want a clarification on whether any of those are going to be preserved and whether they were considered specimen trees in the, um, the survey that was done many years ago. Would you address that? Um, in, in general, um, the evergreens on the side of the hill are not there um, in that we have that public walkway that's going in um, in lieu of those. Um, and it was. We thought it was more important. Actually, they're an old stand. That's they're not specimen trees. None of the, none of the trees on here were specimen trees, um, and we thought it was important to have public access to traverse the site. And the maples. And the maples in front. Um, if we were to preserve them, all of our buildings are about 10 feet from the sidewalk. For that proximity, <coughs> that creates new urbanism. These trees are between 10 and 18 feet from the from back, so they're in the middle of somebody's living room. They're, they're sadly not in great health, um, uh, and they're not specimen trees. There is one tree that has, has generated some interest, and that is right here. There's a tall evergreen. And uh, I've been exchange, you know, I think it's very, very remote that this will end up in Rockefeller Center this Christmas, but there is an, an outside possibility. 
ask another question. I just, I, I want the, I, I guess I need the definition of a specimen tree, whether it's a certain age or a certain. It's on the Beals and Thomas map. They're numbered. Okay. It's, so uh, in that original survey, it was yeah. probably based either on, um, what is that called? Yeah, diameter or yeah. age or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's called caliper. Caliper. A lot of it has to do with the useful life of the tree, but all those uh, fir trees are coming at the end of their life yeah. naturally. Okay. Any other public wish to comment? My name is Cynthia Scholar. Um, I live in Florence, uh, Mountain Laurel Path. And my concern is about affordability and the scarcity of affordable housing in Northampton. Village Hill is right on the bus line, so that makes it you know, very attractive for seniors um, who might lose their ability to drive and for low-income people who might not have cars. So you know, I wonder if we're thinking about the people who might not be able to afford condos in the you know, upper 20s uh, or 200,000, 300,000 uh, range. Do you actually want to address that? Because I think that we are, we've discussed this many times yeah. before. I think that the capital A affordable units are all, they're, they're at where they should be on those, the development in general. Right, right. So as part of the whole plan for redeveloping all the portions of the former state hospital, which includes um, the ice pond drive development, 50% um, of those units are to be set aside as affordable for affordable housing, meaning um, for the most part subsidized affordable housing. And so they're still, we're still within that range. There have been many affordable units developed. The apartments there now um, there were 33 units of apartments, 22 of which were designated as affordable units out on Village Hill. Some of the townhouse units are actually mixed in um, around here are, desert, are allocated and run by the community builders as affordable units. Um, so there is a mix already on Village Hill um, for that. And we're, we have a tally, essentially. We're keeping track of how much of the units and making sure that we're continuing to meet the, that need. Um, the planning board actually approved um, a permit referred to as um, Christopher Heights um, Assisted Living Facility that is going to be about 50 percent um, targeted for um, low-income residents who um, are aging up into and needing assisted living. That's not under construction yet, but it's been approved. Um, I don't know if you want to comment. I, I did wonder myself whether any of these may be in the sort of general vicinity of what we're calling workforce housing more than some of the other properties on, on Village Hill. The, um, the, the cost of development and the price of the land um, prohibits that. The Picoy uh, properties are subsidized um, in the land price. so. Um, we're paying market value. We're actually paying quite a bit more than we did at Eastview. Uh, we're providing a, a, um, a step up on the energy program, but you know it's a it's a very tight margin. So, other than moving into uh, a tax credit situation, there wouldn't be a way for us to do that. It's, it really stinks, but that's how sort of how the numbers work out. Um, anyone else from the public care to comment or ask a question? Okay. Second. All in favor? Do you, but should, should we go ahead and vote on that first? No. Or, no. It's about this. Oh, it's a discussion about this. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You forgot to say. I don't think we should close the public hearing unless we're going to approve the plans tonight. And I think we should approve the plans tonight. I, I don't have an issue with approving the plans with a long list of conditions. I know that's not convenient to the building inspector, but it sounds like in the matter of days that long list of conditions could be down to a small list of conditions and when the and the DPW's comments can be can be met. Um, and it would it would be in keeping with what we've done in the past where <coughs> where uh, the applicant has has a desire to meet everything that's come up by the DPW. We see no issues. Uh, there are no deal breakers uh, as far as comments from the DPW to the applicant. Um, and 
so it's not convenient on the on down the line for the building inspector but for us I think there's no reason for us not to approve it if we think it's going to go forward for just that reason for the, for the number of conditions I mean, this is this is sort of segued into a discussion of whether we should continue right. or not you're right you're can right. we suspend that motion to oppose the yes, public hearing. I think so. I think we probably need to do a yeah, I, poll to see what people are thinking about the conditions and the continuance yeah. for two weeks. Yeah. And, and it seems to me you have a, a builder with a, quite a track record. It's not any fly-by-night outfit that's coming in here and it's going to try and uh, you know, take advantage of us. So I think we should give them every opportunity to get started on this. Other board members? I agree. I'm seeing head nodding. Head nodding. Devin? Well, the only questions of substance have to do with issues that both you all and the DPW know that <clears throat> are not our decision point. I mean, who decides that the stormwater management plan is appropriate? That's what I rely on DPW to do. And they have not provided that in a timely enough manner for, you know, I mean, there's, there's this long list of, of arrangements that they haven't had time to respond to. And so I think, um, you know, there, there are things I like about it. I think they're making a good effort to try to, I don't know the correct term, something like a French drain for the clean water coming off the roof. That sounds like a great idea to me that if they had the capacity in the, <coughs> in the uh, catch basins, they wouldn't necessarily have to do that. So I like that. Um, I, um, I don't have any concerns about the planting because they've already met with the neighborhood and, you know, we've got a history there, so I don't think we're going to end up digging through those details um, it does look very dense to me uh, I think that's the builders advantage but I want density so you know I the only thing that I seem to be snagging on are <clears throat> technical areas that I'm not able probably to resolve beyond saying I'm, I want to carry on the things that DPW has identified and that will get worked out do you want to comment do you have an example of uh, how easy it is for us to comply with some of the DPW comments, like the comment about um, providing test pits where we're putting, where we're proposing to do the stormwater management and, and pipes with holes in them so water leaches back into the ground. We're going to dig for those pipes anyway. It's as easy as us having a field engineer out there to say, yes, there's no soil modeling, therefore we can do it, uh, and just keep going because we're going to dig the trench anyway. And it's just a question of whether we're using solid pipe or pipe with holes in them. So uh, that's how easy it is. I mean, it's, we really see it as uh, fairly easy to comply with all of their conditions. Yeah, I mean, I think the the site plan is great. I think the connectivity um, is meets the criteria in the whole master plan in terms of you know you're you're setting in this new um, arrangement of um, slightly higher density units, but yet um, keep you know fitting it in with the context of the layout street network and the pedestrian paths so I don't think from a and I, and I don't think from a site plan um, review standpoint that any of these structures are going to change substantially so I don't think that even with the comments it, it is true that the that the you're approving the site plan and you're sort of looking at the bigger picture the location of the buildings the architecture the landscaping and the access points and i think all of that stuff is there and, and they've done a great job of that design so i don't uh, it's certainly um uh i don't think they would have to i don't think any of these things will trigger a need for them to come back to you because of any modifications to the site plan so i don't think you need to be concerned about that piece of it Other discussion? I would entertain a motion. To have we close, close the public, public hearing. hearing. Well, that would That's be the one. I thought it was a multiple choice. <laughs> Do I have a second? It's fill second. in the blanks. Yeah. Mark seconded. All in favor? Discussion? Further discussion? Um, I, ha I haven't seen the DPW comments that you know right so I can either I mean I've tried to go through here and modify them into condition form so I could be happy to read through them or um, um, you can probably make a general condition that the permit 
um, reiterate all the modifications that DPW is asking for in terms of the storm the storm drains and the um, water lines and then we can go through the specific ones I think other specific ones that relate to probably both boards um, in particular would be as Jonathan mentioned that um, you know the recording of public access easements be done um, mm -hmm. prior to the certificate of occupancy probably makes most sense for the construction of the um, the buildings that run along the edge of those um, um, and probably the f um, probably the first unit that's completed I would say uh, and then the um, as noted in the previous permit the directional signage for access to the public to the park be put in consistent with the other signs that were already put in around Beachwood. Um, and that um, the other mm -hmm. piece that we didn't talk about was the elimination of the parking spaces <coughs> on site, the on street parking spaces, excuse me, um, that those actually need to be, because those streets have been accepted already by the city, that officially they would need to be, the city council has to vote on removing. Um, those from on street parking so that would need to go through the process um, and so I think you should put a condition on that that the applicant um, shall file a request through DPW for City Council to remove those on street parking spaces I so think it's a City Council request it could be parking and transportation depending on how they're um, so I have a question uh, about that so yeah there there appears to be plenty of parking so I'm not questioning that but all the parking that is created there now is private parking so um, if I want to go up there and park and go to a park and not visit a friend there's no parking there's no on-street parking well two of the on-street parking there'll be two less so I'm that's sorry. true sorry. okay yeah. <laughs> all right I thought you were telling me that there were none no 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 <clears throat> right so there's that piece and then to launch into the DPW conditions would really be that revise that um, you know the biggest issue would be in, um, uh, related to stormwater but also that um, DPW requests that civil construction plans for each phase that are stamped by a P Massachusetts PE be provided to DPW for review and comment um, at least 30 days prior to bidding and that all plans shall incorporate the revisions required here um, herein by the DPW based on their comments. Um, so there's that one and then that the operations and maintenance plan for stormwater as required under the original 2007 um, stormwater permit be um, submitted. Yeah, yeah we, well we don't normally review the DPW conditions in detail but if we make a blanket acceptance of them and make it a requirement we should be covered on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Discussion? Anything else from I would like to make a motion Please do. to accept the site plan by Wright Builders Inc. for 28 multifamily units, Village Hill Road, Northampton, map ID 31C 18. With? With conditions as uh, enumerated by Carolyn, including the DPW conditions. Second? Second. And seconded. All in favor? Thank you. Good luck. Can we adjourn? No, no. we cannot. No. Why not? Glad you asked. That was my whole point. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got us closer to adjournment. Uh, I want to hear about the settlement. Should we do the other people here for the other one? That's uh, it. Yeah, I know. I think. Um, oh, Clovis and so for, the church. for the church. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh 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 oh. I'm sorry, I didn't. And minor amendment too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're changing their god. That That's allowed. That picture. That would probably be a major amendment. I think so. Yeah, I'm looking at it too. I don't want to do <laughs> Can I take a quick uh, bathroom break while everybody's filing? I think we might keep going though. Do you mind? I need a key. He mind. He doesn't mind. Okay. Is Berkshire Design? I am. Uh, is Berkshire Design still in the house to present on the church?
can see that. Sorry. The church. The church. Elizabeth. I want to say it's something. The bathroom is locked. I'll hold it. Never mind. Okay. This is cool. It doesn't seem like. Right. Agenda. Now been drawn on. I might be able to get. He's looking for an agenda. Oh, okay, great. Uh, mine's been drawn on, but. Oh, here's a. Oh, well, no, it's not either. Sorry. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm here for the St. Elizabeth and Seton Parish. This project was approved uh, what 2010 or something. Um, this was the. For a minor, uh, I meant a cha minor change to the plan, um, in that they would like to do this ramped walk connection to the sidewalk, rather than the curved uh, walks that go up either side of the front walk depicted in the approved yeah. plan here. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's basically it. It's 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 a you know budgetary. But there still would be a ramp from the sidewalk up to the door. Yes. The, the there would just be. Handicap access into the buildings on the side here on a ramp. So this kind of uh, connection makes sense that you can get up and get the uh, access on a convenient side. You know. Need you on my. And so I'm assuming that the change is ADA compliant? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. We've shot rates and everything, made sure you know it could be done. Unfortunately, the, the pitch would be, you know, greater than what is allowed for a, a walkway, so it, it jumps up into the ramp category. Mm -hmm. uh, but it would be a ramp section with handrails on both sides. Um, but it also seems to make sense to connect this existing or this uh, recently built sidewalk, you know, connect it down to the King Street sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So we, we thought it made sense. It helps them out a little bit, and you know that they don't have to um, spend as much for, you know, the dual. Curved walks, you know, which looked really nice and is pretty formal and um, consistent with, you know, that's a wry formal type of entry, but um, they just don't, they just changed their minds and didn't really want to spend the money for both of those walks. Huh. <laughs> Questions? I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I look. Uh, it's only a budgetary thing, right? I mean, That's really. Just, just said. <laughs> Don't look at me. Well, they, they looked at some <laughs> other options too, and and how to, you know, shave down the costs to a certain degree. And, um, you know, one was coming up on the north side, but then you'd have to traverse across the front to get to the side. And they actually looked at extending a walkway out this way toward the bike path, and maybe potentially asking if they could use the bike path as part of the connection to the site and et cetera. And, you That's know, hilarious. Just, it just got too you know, convoluted and, and you know, even right, potentially exactly. more problematic, you know, crossing driveways and such. So, so the bike path is in, it looks like from what I see, it's in and right. connects. Yeah. On Goggins property. That's correct. Right. Right. It does connect into yes. the church. Yeah. Right, plus, yeah, yeah, you have the property issue. My only issue is with, on the initial design, somebody could drop off somebody at the front away from the traffic pattern. They'd get out and they'd get to the front. Here, they're, if they drop somebody off, they are, depending Same. on how, you know, how they park or how the person's getting in or out, they're right. in or next to the driveway, which seems cumbersome and potentially dangerous. We, we, we kind of looked at this as more, <clears throat> It would most likely be used by people that are walking to the facility. I think if you, well, compared to what was there, this parking lot works infinitely no better than right. what was there. So I think that drop off to the building can occur in here in a you would drop easier you. manner rather than, you know, potentially out on busy mm -hmm. King Street. Can't get out. <laughs> Roll yourself out. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice concern, but I think in practicality, people would drop in. Absolutely. Yeah. 
It's much, it, yeah. It's much so safer. the center walk was on the original plan. Yes, this. Yeah. And the curves were to accommodate the changing grade and That's allow correct. you to mm -hmm. get yeah, there. There's actually a set of steps, you know, because there's a grade <coughs> uh, embankment right, right, in front. Right, right. So there's a set of steps, steps still that lead up um, to a little uh, a terrace below the existing stairs. But right. that that walk that went <coughs> like that was for handicap access, and the other one was put into kind of mirror. Can you flip that over again? Yeah. I mean, so, oh, so all the curvature is to keep it ADA compliant. Right, just to right, 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 right. Right. Quite Does there really need to be, a, well, hmm. It's steep, it's very yeah. steep. Yeah. We also talked about just doing that, but yeah. they, the church would like to seek permission to change it to <laughs> just that. Well, I can understand why they want to do that, but I'm against it. Right. Devin? I can understand why they would want to do it. First off, I, I had to smile when you said we have a minor change, because all changes are minor. They all work. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I, I see no advantage to taking out half of the curve. Right. That, that ruins the symmetry of it. Um, it. With the landscaping in front, it's not, it's not a, an architectural detail that's going to be very prominent. And so I... I think they've accomplished the functionality, and I'm not opposed to the change. I regret it. It's it's it ha it looked better as an on the on the plans on the architectural plans of it. But no one's going to use those curved walkways when they have a straight up entrance. So those are only going to be used for it, it for be rare. Yeah. Certainly. So I I to no. me I can't argue that we we have a very strong case to make them not do what they're asking. Um, let me just ask before we get too much further. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to comment on this? Um, Mark? Uh, back to the other side. Is there a, a, a curb on the entrance, on the, on the main entrance? Is there a curb there, or is it, uh, or is it bituminous or granite? Or on, on the right there. Yeah, between the, okay. the proposed walk and <laughs> the entrance. There's a, the concrete walk continues across the right. It drops down, so it, uh, it's flush. But as you drive in, mm -hmm. on, so on, on the left, is that is there a curb? On the left. As you come in the main driveway from yep. Kings right there, mm -hmm. on as on my left, is there a curb? A curb right there between the entrance drive and the handicap walk. It's a handicap ramp on both sides of the driveway. So there's no obstructions for uh, somebody in a wheelchair. Going from where to where? You're wondering yeah. if it's a continuous curb cut from the that encompasses the new walkway. Is that what you're asking? I guess I'm gonna have to steam. Um, no, I'm just this right here. There is a curb. This. Oh, this, oh, oh this So if a, if, a, if somebody's in a wheelchair here and Pete and there's right. heavy traffic, or if there's a funeral or something, it's curb. I'm just sitting for safety's no, sake. Th this is this. There's slope ran a curb on each side, okay. and then you know, plus we have a. I think there's railing in there. Uh, that's right. what I was thinking. If there wasn't, I was going to propose it. Really. This is about a he said there was. seven to eight foot grass oh, okay. strip that would be between the driveway and the proposed uh, ramp. Okay. And there's a rail on the ramp. <coughs> oh, okay. I, didn't, I missed that part. Okay. So I, I would, I would say that it's if somebody comes up to the the main entrance under the new plan, it's not at all obvious where the handicap access is. Well, that's always been the case. <laughs> I mean. Well, it wouldn't be if there if you use the old plan. Still have to get there. I mean, it, it's still the same basic path of travel. You come, you have to come to the front and then get to the side. Either way, is is there any signage that indicates at the front um, walk where the handicap entrance is? I don't believe there is. No, there isn't. Uh, I mean, if we made that a condition, so the only handicap access is in the center ex center on the right. That's correct. Okay. This doesn't change the planting plan at all? No trees are being oh, taken out or anything? In, no, no trees are going to be taken out. Um, they, they will also install the four uh, conditioned street trees from the original permit. Mm -hmm. um, but that will probably likely happen in the spring mm -hmm. time. But we, we actually did show four new trees, uh, street trees along the front. Um, we're also going to end up losing, which one was it? I think this one. This one's in poor health. But this is where the, also the new driveway you know, to the, um, I 
I don't know what phase it's going to be, but to the community center mm -hmm. building phase yeah. um, comes into phase N, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is really being broken up into little little projects. Would that be something though to consider if if we're taking away the main if somebody if that's to promote people on the sidewalk. If the old plan was people on the sidewalk go to the front door, there's handicap access to the front door, and then they're guided around. Now they come to the front door, that walk doesn't exist. Maybe give them some signage to tell them where that handicap entrance is, or is that just too much? Um, I mean, I think if you've been able to get up the stairs um, to there, I mean, the main entrance is on the side anyway. It's all one entrance, right? Well, right, yeah, I mean, most of the people do come in from this side. And that's handicap accessible. They, you know, they right. pull in. Yeah. Um, I don't think that many people currently actually use the front. They right, so I think the main entrance but is that one anyway. So I don't they, think they can put it in the newsletter. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Primarily, it's, it's for the people that already use the facility. So I think they, they know how to do it. So no, no new customers expected? Right. <laughs> okay. They're going to receive a sign. Any other uh, questions, discussion? I like the other design better, but I, I wouldn't object to that. Um, public we don't need to close. I asked no, about public. No, I mean, no so the, oh. this, is an, this is an administrative, a request for administrative amendment that um, I think did, was above my <laughs> grade of making the modification because there were mm -hmm. some changes I think it meant, made sense for you to discuss, but I don't think it rises to the level of full-blown amendment with mm -hmm. recording and all of that. So there's not an official public hearing, it's just noted on the agenda. But you'd like a vote? Yes. Okay. Well, and I think with the history on this property, that was wise of you. Yes. <coughs> and there was quite a bit of lively discussion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will entertain a motion. Mark? I move to approve the proposed minor amendments to the landscape plan at the St. Elizabeth Church. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? All opposed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good, good evening. Night. You too. Paul oh, Dustin Cassanzi. So I just brought this in front of you because there are a couple of um, um, items that I just want you to be aware of and sort of get your um, approval on. As uh, I don't know if you're aware, but the there were, you know about the original conflict and the appeals of various decisions between the two property owners, um, the Coldest property and the Coldest property. Um, and, uh, and the city um, and both parties sat down and negotiated a settlement. So as part of that settlement agreement, it's not been signed yet, but it's very close to being finalized and signed and recorded so that both parties can move forward. Um, yeah, I know. How was that discussion? <laughs> I'm on pins and needles. <laughs> the discussion ended up very well because we have a settlement. <laughs> um, and so basically the way that it ended up is um, sort of an allocation of mitigation money from the Casenzi property. They, they were going to um, make a payment of 79000 and change in traffic mitigation um, that would go into the mitigation along King Street. So as part of the settlement, that mitigation money actually would go to Colvest to offset the mitigation. And the reasons for that would be to address, they went they did additional uh, modifications to the intersection at Barrett Street with a pedestrian phase signal and new crosswalk hatching and, um, at that at Barrett Street in addition to the um, crosswalk and easements in front of their property. I thought that was a condition for the yes. crosswalk and easements in front of their property, the stuff on Barrett Street. It was part of the con it was part of that that was not subtracted <coughs> off of their that wasn't calculated as part of their mitigation. Okay. And so essentially we're saying that part of the 79,000 coming from Colvest essentially offsets the pedestrian improvements that are made that were made at Barrett Street. Um, we'll all as part of that um, Colvest is also granting to the city a public easement along their frontage for 
to the city. So that adds space that could potentially be used in the future for any um, improvements that um, need to be made for pedestrian access, not just, I, I forget where the property line is, but it's somewhere at the back of their sidewalk maybe. But basically Colvest is giving you know, easement along their frontage for, for that purpose. So planning board does not have any say in this. It's a done deal. We, well, the settlement is what all the parties agree to. Um, but what the, the issue is, we just want to make sure that it's clear where traffic mitigation money is going to, because <coughs> it is part, I mean, part of your, your permitting process ha requires that there's mitigation for both um, traffic, but pedestrian and bicycle improvements. So this was not what you originally had envisioned that right. the 79,000 could be going to. But as part of the settlement, because of the cross-access easements and because of the additional improvements that Colvis made to basically two intersections, that's how that's what we hashed out as an agreement. I think it's terrible. <laughs> I really do. I mean, I think the city well, is giving Colvis $79,000 that we had intended to use. From, for traffic mitigation and uh, to, to settle this. And I, I mean, I just want to say that in no, public because I'm really disappointed. I, I basically agree with you, but it looked to me like an insoluble problem and we found a solution for it. But it wasn't the city's problem. It was two right. private parties' problems. Yeah, well, they were trying to make it our problem, but it never was. It was part of, part of, uh, partly our problem. I think we share that. I think we, I, I looked at it as a, as a solution when we were doing the permitting that we created a situation that effectively was a commercial shared driveway. I mean, it felt like we set that up to be difficult to negotiate out. And, and it, I, I think those are business arrangements they should negotiate out. <coughs> but this looked a whole lot worse. Were you, you weren't, I don't think you were on the board when we permitted for coal dust when they put the light in. Uh, there was nothing no. confusing about it. No, see, I, I agree with what you said. From the standpoint of, of the issue between the two where their lots join. But I, I think it's an independent discussion from what they did at Barrett Street from when we permitted <coughs> that that still blinking yellow light in front of their development. I, I think we're giving credit for what they did in the past mm -hmm. where they're raising their hand and saying, yeah, but remember when we did that, don't we get bonus points for that? And my answer is, well, no, that was a condition to get this light over here, you had to do that work over there. So that's where I'm not clear as to to why, if that was a condition, if I'm remembering correctly, that they did that work on Barrett Street in order to get that blinking light in front of their property. The value of the work that they did on Barrett Street, why is that coming up again as far as, as being a... Well, I think but the other, the added piece to that that the city gets is what was not there, which was the public easement along, all along their frontage. So that is something that was never part of that discussion. That is, that's what we've, you know, we did that actually, Cosenzi has granted the city easement along their frontage as well. As part of this settlement? No, as part of their original permit. Okay. So they had that, Colvest did, <clears throat> also, Leah Kia also did that. And so all along as we think about potentially changes to, modifications to the structure of King Street itself, and how we might, you know, if we put in, um, you know, additional um, bike lanes or um, other street furniture and that kind of thing. Benches. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, if we, you know, we um, um, a separate Nelson bicycle. Nygaard a separate had this bicycle design, track that right? Is separate bicycle. from traffic. Right. If we do cycle tracks that are separate from traffic, then we can take, we can move into that real estate potentially. But we need to. We would need to start planning for that for a significant portion of King Street, and we've started to think along those lines since Colvest was permitted, and so this helps us move in that, um, add to that possibility. Even though it's really long term, and we have to figure out a lot of other things in the interim, but it does give value to the to the city, and we've given, um, in the order of. Fifty plus thousand um, dollar benefit or calculated benefit for easements in the past along commercial frontages, so it's not out 
of, and that's a significant piece of property in terms of its length along King Street. So it is consistent with the values that we assigned for those types of easements for other property owners. A couple of things. One is it seems like the city has inserted itself to find a resolution to a problem between two private parties. Except that the city was a party to that. I so understand that, but when they came before us, it was two private parties and they were trying to get us to solve it for them. We didn't solve it for them, so they went to somebody else until they got the answer they wanted. That, that's what it seems like. <laughs> and in the end, we did solve it for them, we being right. the city. Not uh, except we didn't it. solve it. They've solved it, and yet they haven't come back to us. So it, it seems like they went, they got what they wanted because they just kept asking until they got somebody to say, yes, you can do this. Well, but, but I guess. It seems to circumvent. But I, Why did they ever come here in the first place? Nothing like no, that ever because, happened before. Because I think, you know, I, actually having sat through that conversation, everybody gave up a little bit, and that's the nature of settlement. That's but, but the nature that's of not, a good settlement. But, but that was not be my point. My point is, they never should have been in the circumstance to give something up unless they were in front of us. Why did the city say, oh, well, come to us and we'll work something out because we want everybody to be happy when the original decisions were made here? Why didn't they come here and have to work something out? Because court costs are very high and, and the city is party to that. So we, our benefit was that we didn't have to go into protracted legal you know, um, so can, can so I, why do we have six citizens, seven citizens sitting here doing their work, volunteering their time, when apparently you can go around this if you want to, if you have the time and money to do that? It, it, it seems to me that the city gave something up in order to make this work, but I felt that the city already gave up more than they should have to get the coal West property to a point where that they wanted initially. Yes, but I keep in the mix that what the city didn't want to do was make a curb cut for that second property that was really un in right. a very unsafe <clears throat> place right. along King Street. Right. So the, what the, what we got out of this was a development and no extra curb cut. But Colvest right. knew that. I mean, then they accepted it with right. no problem. There right. was no discussion at that original hearing like, oh, this whole cross easement thing is going to be a real problem. They were like, great, because they had in their back pocket like, oh, there's nobody here yet. When they come, we're going to demand money from them. And and um, I mean, that, I, that's how I see. I mean, it, that's really clear to me. It that felt that way. I, yeah, agree. I, I agree. I think, you know, they made an agreement and then they wanted to do it. Well, one of the things that we had to do in this settlement meeting was we had to say okay look we're at this point we need to move forward because we're everybody's stuck and so you know we could go on and on about who knew what and who felt comfortable because everyone has their own interpretation about what was played out when they received permits and that wasn't getting anybody anywhere so the city had an interest in resolving the problem because we didn't want to spend money on going to court for months and months. Right. We were on the precipice of doing that. They, we had to be responding to um, the demands for, um, you know, response to these. Um. It's just a shame that so, they used litigation as a weapon. Right. I mean, that's what this comes down to. Right. That's but what you've not seen that anyone's never done right. that I mean, that's the reality, and I, I get that. Wait, and you've seen that You're before. You're the lawyer. It won't be the last one. Right. And sometimes the, the just the way it happens. I think that the, um, I think everyone, um, I, I feel like all the parties gave some. Colvest didn't get everything they wanted by any means. Cosenzi gave, gave, gave up more. Up. Yeah, what did Cosenzi give, give up? Right away. Uh, well, they, right, they have one access point, but in terms of this, they also came to the table with some money that they will pay in addition to the traffic mitigation to Colvest. So they didn't um, give up anything. They got the short end of the stick. But yeah. the, right, I mean, Cassenzi didn't have to well, give. Shouldn't have given right. up. Process that we should know if we have a. Is there a lesson learned? <laughs> well, I, I think there. I mean, I guess I would take away the lesson would be that if a situation comes up, we we want to probably enter into different agreements um, ahead of any permitting that are, are signed and recorded before before any permits are pulled or any construction happens so that we don't get into this, you know, after the fact yeah. the, thing. I think the way that this, the way it was structured, you know, 
But how, how is that possible in this type of development where well, you could get a signed um, agreement ahead of time saying, here's my easement. I'm not going to be able to do any kind of construction until I record the easement. It's an irrevocable easement. I think that was a lot. Or something like that. Um, and so, you know, let's take Mass Development um, and Village Hill and this whole project here. The condition is that there'll be a public, a, um, an easement for, you know, across this property, public access for the path. So... We know that's going to happen, but if we were concerned about it, we could say, you know, you have to record this before you even put a shovel in the ground. And but, you have to so how would this particular project have been done differently, where Colvis had the property and they said, we're going to have an easement to the property to the north. And then Cosenzi comes in and says, we, we're going to take advantage of that easement. And Colvis says, well, we didn't say it was going to be free, that we're going to charge you for that. Well, because if it's already on record, then it's there. When we first it was on record. It was on that was part. It that seems was like no, no, they hadn't reported the easement. It seems like you had two parties. One dealt in good faith. One dealt in bad faith. And the one that dealt in bad faith got the best end of the deal. It maybe hadn't been recorded, but it was. Put, it was a condition for the building permit. It was a condition for the occupancy permit. permit. But that's what I'm saying is, they didn't record the easement itself. So we said we had to look at the easement before it got recorded, but they never put it on record because the trigger for putting it on record wasn't um, before. It right, was before we'll, a building we'll, permit, and they never. But, but what developer is going to record the easement before they have? Well, if the planning condition to, says they right. do, or if we say if the planning board says they're not going, you're not going to issue a permit until you see, uh, you know, a signed. You, you could even have a development agreement where the developer signs, and it's a binding agreement, and they have to do it, even if there's not a tenant on the other right. side. Right. Right. Will Katsenzi have access? across the other property yes yeah. yes well and it does sound like some of the chips that were traded are relatively of the same size you know the seventy nine thousand mm -hmm. mitigation for the, right. for the yeah let's let's face it Cosenzi wasn't part of the original deal at all they came in I mean I'm not quite sure why we have to you know establish monetary divisions and who made out and who didn't make out um i'm perfectly happy to put it behind me because that whole property was a big mess originally was um originally the planning board said the buildings had to be out to the street they got grandfathered you know put it behind us there's a, there's a couple of you know, there's a there's a big bunch of commercial development there now and it's not awful hmm. Hmm. There's a standard. <laughs> <laughs> <It's not laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'll tell you, <laughs> something not being awful is worth quite a bit, as far as I'm concerned. Slogan. You get t-shirts with that made up? It's not awful. <laughs> Paradise City. <laughs> <laughs> it's not awful. Well, in closing, I think the traffic plan that we were after is what we've gotten. And I think the traffic plan will be the issue about those properties. So I, I, I'm... I'm relieved to hear right i just didn't anticipate we'd have to give seventy nine thousand dollars in traffic mitigation money up to get it right. and i think it sends an unfortunate message i get it i mean i get it right i of all people get it right. but i don't yeah. like it sorry to belabor the point um do we have anything else <laughs> um no. So do you, do you need something on that? Do you need an approval? Do you need a? I just want to talk. <laughs> Apparently about. not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Should we take a vote? Yeah, yeah. Should we take a? Let's take a vote. <laughs> sure, I'll take a vote. I guess I. Um, who brokered this? Who was at the table? Just out of curiosity. Nope. More lawyers than anybody else. <laughs> yeah. Was Mark Tanner there? No, that's just a low blow. <laughs> I'm just saying those are the folks that have to put it all together and write the text that's a 10-page easement document. So yeah. is it our Settlement. city solicitor? Or? Yes, yeah. city solicitor. Um, I mean, did planning office myself. have? Oh, you, oh, so yeah, you guys yeah. had input. We were there. Um, uh, I, I, I think we've had our say. say. <laughs> on rec I think we've had our say on record. I think yeah. three people from Colvis, four people from Cosenzi, and Anything else? No. I move we adjourn. Second. I would like to, I would like to congratulate you.